live and on YouTube and welcome to Broadway Upholstery School and uh, boy as usual the week goes by fast and we've got a lot to talk about a lot of excitement here at the school a lot of online classes coming your way uh, but we're really especially excited about Bernice about Bernice King who is here and she's teaching her specialized techniques uh, on uh, slip covering so we're realizing that um, people have sewing machines, a lot of people have sewing machines that, that are able to sew lightweight fabrics. A lot of people can't be hammering in their apartment buildings, for instance. So, so we're figuring that uh, slip covers is kind of a, a natural uh, progression in what we're doing in the school. And who knows, in the future, we'll, be, uh, we'll probably be featuring other uh, aspects of upholstery or trades. And we're really excited about that. So um, for all those who have signed up for yearly subscriptions, I think you're getting, and we've heard from people, I think the value of that is just uh, can't be underestimated. So uh, I, I hope that you guys look into that. If not, test us out with one class and see, see the different tips that, that you're getting. But I, I'll let people speak uh, who have uh, contacted us with comments. So let's get to that right away. And as usual, uh, we know there's people waiting already, so questions and answers, those get first priority. So uh, jump on board anytime with that. And as usual, we have a vast studio audience here attending, and um, uh, he is all but one person, really. So, <laughs> and, and it's Jimmy, and Jimmy's going to be coming up here soon. Right? That's right. I'll be coming Jimmy. up shortly, uh, you know, to, to get this show on the road. I guess, as they say. Yeah. Well, we're going to show Jimmy's chair that he's been working on. I think he's, he's he, he cut his fabric today. I think he's done a great job, and also show you Michelle's work which is uh, being featured and I have up here I'll get to it a little bit later Martha Washington chair and I want to focus uh, I'm going to start taking it apart live if I have time and I want to show you I want to cut around this um, area here where where this one of the hardest cuts in upholstery right here and I want to show you um, I want to critique maybe um, whoever cut this out I think they did an okay job and they had a challenging fabric, but we'll get to that later. So let's get right to, well, actually we'll ask us any live questions or comments. Not yet. Okay, so let's get right to the, the ones that catch up from uh, last week. So Janine, I have to a call out to Janine, thanking her. Uh, she's one of our original supporters on YouTube. She's been following us right along, and I think that she's one of our, our greatest uh, supporters, and we appreciate that. And she has, uh, she's commented on the slip covering tips that we had, uh, we already featured on YouTube. It's called Joining a Covered Welt, is how Bernice uh, describes that. And she says, uh, fantastic tips that I didn't know after doing slip covers here and there for 20 plus years. I'm so glad I bought a yearly subscription. I can't wait for this class. Such good value. And she's going to be having a lot coming up. Uh, Bernice, so stay tuned. Um, so thank you as usual, Janine. And then we have um, the same uh, joining a covered welt, and that was from, um, we have another comment from the Comical Canadian, and he simply says, amazing video for Bernice. Another, another round of applause for Bernice King. And really? All for Bernice? Yeah, wow. yeah. <laughs> She's hey. I have to share the spotlight, Jimmy. Right? Yeah. Well, not too much. But, uh, <laughs> you know. And then we have uh, Enoch. He he says um, for stuffing a bay cushion window. Let me tell you something. I got my workout on that one. Uh, that's on YouTube. And um, let me tell you, it it's uh, a big cushion, um, and it was tough. And um, Enoch says, thanks, Kevin, you're good at it. He says, thank you, thank you. And um, the next one, again, is uh, Janine commented on the stuffing a bay cushion, Jimmy. Yes. And um, how is it? Is the concession stand open? Uh, I, you know, I'm still waiting for the popcorn to be, <laughs> you know, okay? okay? Let's just say it's going to be a two-star night. <laughs> Janine says, uh, on, on the stuffing a bay cushion, she says, great workout, as always, fantastic tips, thank you. She's looking forward to starting my yearly subscription of your online classes. The first course I purchased was so valuable that I had to buy a yearly subscription. Th 
Thank you, Janine. I think that that's the testimony we get. Um, this testimonial, I think, uh, says it all. She says, such great, great value for, for the money. Thank you for all the work you put into both your YouTube channel and the online classes, and it is appreciated. Thank you. Well, I, I hope I'm giving you um, the apprenticeship program pretty much is what I'm trying to do that I, I was fortunate enough to receive as a younger person and the knowledge that I had around me and um, I'm just trying to pass that knowledge on hopefully to make it an easy transition for you guys to go into your apprenticeship and then maybe your journeyman and then who knows maybe you guys will be opening up your own shop someday and um, I, I love the idea that I'm, I'm maybe part of that so thank you um, I did want to mention on the YouTube channel I think I mentioned this last week we, we we're approaching 8,000 subscribers so please if you haven't already subscribed, please do that. I mean, uh, uh, we have over a million views, which we're very happy about. And I, 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 think it's, uh, I think it's important that we have the YouTube channel. We love that. And we also, on the online classes, I think, I think they're, they're different. And the, thing, the big thing that makes them different is the, is the apprentice, like Jimmy, who's taking the class and asking all the right questions and maybe occasionally making a mistake. And even I occasionally will make a mistake uh, on the online classes, but I think by le learning the mistakes or seeing the mistakes, it's going to make you a better upholsterer or a slipcover person now that we got Bernice here. So hopefully, um, you'll be you guys will be um, watching. So that's the end of that one. And then the slipcovers, uh, Enoch says, that's great that we're offering the the slipcover course again. Bernice gets another call out. She's really I tell you, Bernice, um, Bernice has a uh, slipcover network that she was in, which now, by the way, is the upholstery, I should mention that Broadway Upholstery School Forum on Facebook. Uh, you go on there, actually, you guys should go on there and see some of the great slipcovering jobs that people are posting from that network. Uh, that was through Bernice. She's the one that asked us to do that because those people there know her. And, that, and, and there's some comments about Bernice also, I think, on the uh, forum. So Broadway Upholstery School Forum. And uh, who knows? Uh, one thing that struck me is there was a beautiful leather sofa on there. And uh, people were wondering on the forum, on the slipcover forum, is this something that can be slipcovered? And people were giving suggestions on how you can upholster it. I think it was a Chesterfield leather sofa. I'll tell you something. To reupholster that in, in new leather, is extremely expensive. If you could find a way to slip cover something like that, you still get some detail. And um, wow, the savings that you can have are amazing. So again, you know, ask your live questions. Erica, is it Erica that's usually driving at this time of night, Patrick, listening to us in yeah. the in the car? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I think he said yes. <laughs> I heard him mumble. I heard a guy mumble. That's not Brad. It's really good. Oh, okay. So Janine, um, she says, uh, also she commented on um, welcome to our, our new instructor uh, video that we have up there. And she says, looks fantastic. So that's good. We have an, all, an awful lot of arts and crafts people, Kevin. Yes, we do, Jimmy. You, you'd be surprised. Oh, so I wanted, last week on the question and answer, do you remember that stickly chair we had up here? Yes. And we were showing, uh, we found uh, a photograph online of the one of the original stickly workshops. Okay. And the guy, one of the guys had this huge, nice mustache, and it was, you know, they had the all the... Room. Yeah. They Classy. Had, yeah, wasn't it something? I, I like that. So the chair, that chair was for a client, and the client saw the video, and she loved it. And even when we were... On the question and answer last week, she commented, I think that she, she was commenting on it. She commented on it. She said, there were six brothers, six Stickley brothers, and they had eight companies between them all. Oh, wow. Isn't that, I never knew that. I only thought it was one or maybe two brothers. Right. But they had, they had she, she did some research, which, which was good. I, I, I thanked her for that. And I think um, she actually said that during, I think, Patrick, the live broadcast last week, I think. So then I did the chair, and, I, and then um, she says, I'm, I, the timing is a little off here. She says, very cool to see my chair, sitting on it right now, great work. 
So um, I think the Stickley brothers would be proud, right, Jimmy? I think so. I'm just curious about what it originally looked like with the arms. Oh, well, you can go online and look. But you, didn't you help us take it apart a little bit uh, yes. last week's show? Yes, yeah. it was uh, a little bit older, but it was nice. I mean, the, the, the workmanship was, was spot on. Excuse me, Jimmy. We have a live question, so that usually takes precedent over you. I'm sorry. What? what? A live question. What? What? <laughs> uh, this is from Connie. Can you reuse horsehair when redoing a chair? If so, does it require cleaning? I think that it depends. If it's your chair, if it's been in your family, you know the history. I don't think you have to clean it. I think you can take your um, pneumatic gun if you have one. If you have an attachment that blows out, you can blow out a lot of the dust if, if need be. Sometimes you don't have to do that because it's been covered. Now if you don't know the history of the chair, you can clean horsehair. We've had people uh, clean horsehair. We put it in a pillow case. Make sure the pillowcase zipper is closed. You might want to even hand stitch it closed so that it doesn't open while you put it in the wash. Um, and people have washed the horse here. They bring it in. It's like good as new, Jimmy. It's like yes. it's like they had been to the hairdresser with the, with the, with the horse. Well, I, I, I think the first chair that I did was a horse head chair. Did you clean your own horse hair, Jimmy? I was told by your associate at the time to do that. that was a good way and, and that worked, didn't it? Now, it did. Would you share, why don't you come on up here and share just for a minute. Jimmy has a, a sad, minute? a sad, well for now, then we're going to have you come up a little bit later, but I, I, want, oh, I want you okay. to come up to tell you. Okay, what. would you like me to? I want you right here, Jimmy. Okay. Jimmy's got a very sad story well, to tell. No, it's not a sad story. I think it's well, sad. Well, okay. Yeah. He, he had a whole thing of coconut fiber that you yeah. washed recently, and, and, and this was a good thing to go through for other people don't make the same mistake, but tell, tell us what happened. Well, I washed it, and uh, it came out really well. Um, I was concerned about the dryer that I have in my apartment building was uh, a little hotter than I wanted it to be and I was very careful with not uh, getting it too warm. Of course I'm concerned with fibers and fire and all that type of thing. Um, I did uh, dry it most of the way uh, and then I let it sit out but when I let it sit out it did get a little bit moldy. Yeah, and that's uh, the tragic part. Yes, I think if it was the horse hair, I think it would have fared much better. I don't think I don't think horse hair would have would have uh, accumulated mold. It would have dried faster. First yes. of all, I think being a plant fiber, I think that that was the do that that's what doomed it. Yeah, I and definitely it, it think being so. a little moist. Well, I looked at it, and and what I remember from the horse hair from the first project I ever did versus this, you could tell it was not as resilient. Yeah, it was not as put together as the. The right. Yes, the right. Fiber. Right. So. So that's Jimmy's tragic story of coconut yes, fiber gone yes. wrong. Yes. No one shed a tear here, please. It's a, it's all good. <laughs> so Jimmy, we'll ask you to come up in a minute after okay. I get through this because we want to show Jimmy's chair off. See, Jimmy's doing a, a chair that so we had to regear on his chair. We couldn't reuse the coconut fiber because of that tragedy. So. <laughs> Then we, we have to go to all other materials in his chair, which we'll talk about that in, in a little while. We'll have Jimmy come up. But thank you, Jimmy. Uh, take a seat now. You, can you get by row nine, right? You, you, yeah, just, yeah. Those right. people oh, move well, well, here comes the usher now with my hot dog and, and my, uh, my Diet Coke. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> All right, so we're getting back. Unless there's more live questions. Did Connie have a follow-up question, by the way? Okay. So Dave... Dave says, um, this is a good comment from Dave, and you know, he's a guy, so he can say this. Slip covers, it, it was about the slip cover, welcome to our new instructor uh, video that we had. And Dave says, slip covers are probably underrated. If people without a huge budget would just buy a good quality sofa, it could last a lifetime while having seasonal fabric. Unfortunately, not to be sexist, but guys tend to stink at it. I've made quite a few, but never been thrilled with the finished product. Yeah, you know what I think? I, I think I don't know what Dave's background is. But I could talk about myself. My background is mostly I'm on a I'm an upholsterer, so most of my life, my work life, is on the bench, right? I'm on the bench putting fabric together on a chair, pretty much, right? So, in the, when we were first learning, we had stitches that worked on the machine. Now, that's not to say we didn't get on the machine, because we did. You, had, you have to get on some uh, sewing, you know, to learn sewing. 
but the fact is there's not as much time for a bench upholster on the machine right so I think he's got a point I think it would would it would probably be true for both man and woman if, if depending on your background I think that traditionally though women were more at the machine so they became better at sitting down doing covers doing at the machine mm -hmm. plus I think honestly I mean you look at these mitts Jim you got big mitts like this you know, yeah, yeah, I, I, think so. I think that's a problem when you're trying to do. I had a problem today threading the needle. Well, I um, think women you know. have a better technique of, of need, being neat, and yeah. knowing yeah. guys have a rough idea of, yeah. of that. So I think Dave's onto something here. I have to say, uh, I have to say that uh, some of the finest tailors I've known are men. Um, you know, so it's interesting. I think it. I think it comes down to how long you're you're, you're doing a particular task. I, I do, I, I do. So um, that's a good comment, though. I like that comment. So here we go from Teresa. Same video, boy. Bernice, is, I think we we hit something here with these slipcover classes because we're getting Bernice got a lot of compliments and a lot of comments. So there's another comment about Bernice. She said, Teresa says I have taken classes from Bernice. She knows Bernice, and she is an excellent teacher. I highly recommend her classes. So there you go. For all you people who've signed up for the yearly subscriptions, I think you've got great value coming up. And as Janine says, it's good value. So Now here's a comment. It's a long one, and I'm really proud of this because I labored on, on uh, we have something up on the store at Broadway Upholstery called Fundamentals of Upholstery. And um, it comes with, uh, right now, the way it's presented um, is with the, the instruction book it's a downloadable book it's also the video and um, that's it but we're going to be offering coming up it's going to be a little bit more expensive it's going to be the full thing it's going to be the kit it's going to be the supplies also and it's going to be the, the frame um, so you know we've been hearing from people people have been saying why don't you offer the whole thing in one package and that's what we're going to do so that's going to be coming up so pay attention to that but I wanted to read this um, and this is just somebody who purchase just the video and the, and the instructional so he says uh, this is Antonio and he says absolutely loved it it took me from A to Z in an easily understandable form I have watched many of Broadway upholstery's videos online which are always great but I've never had any formal teach and never understood why I was doing what I was doing this package cleared so many things up I just finished everything and now I'm hooked Definitely looking to try out one of the regular classes next, but I'm still new at this and wanted to be sure I had good base information. I recommend this for anyone. Beginners will get a good foundation out of it, and pros, although I'm not a pro, could fine-tune their base basics and expand on what they already know. Wow, I, I couldn't have said that better myself on the fundamentals of upholstery. I, I think, Antonio, thank you. I can't thank you enough for that comment. And the thing about that kit is that um, you can take it apart. Take the whole thing apart, go back to the frame, and then do the whole thing again. Because I think you have enough supplies, you have enough tacks, I know that, you have enough webbing, you have enough uh, of all of it, that you can put it together again. And you can save certain pieces like the foam and, and the rubberized horse hair as you're taking it off. But you know, the more you do things, the more you practice, the better you are, right? So that's what we know. Um, so. Now that we got so much activity on Bernice, Patrick, pa Patrick, I think I want to do a show a clip, uh, an introduction. Is this an introduction to Bernice, Patrick? Right. What? Yeah. And uh, Patrick's gonna put that up there for a couple of minutes, and then I'll come back. And how long will that take, Patrick? Well, a couple of minutes, two to five. Are you, is that all ready to go? Yep. Here we go. My name is Bernice King and I'm going to be making slip covers for Upholstery on Broadway. Kevin has been my friend for a long time, uh, 20 years or so. Slip covers are my thing. <laughs> Upholstery is his. He's a master upholsterer. 
So I've been making slip covers for over 30 years and I've been teaching slip cover making for 17 years to people that want to be in the slip cover trade or for uh, people that just want to take on the challenge of making a slip cover for themselves. It's generally a very approachable project. You don't need a lot of equipment. Good sewing machine, scissors, pins, and a lot of fabric. And you can transform your furniture. Uh, the wonderful thing about a slip cover versus upholstery, slip covers are removable. Uh, generally they're washable, uh, depending on the fabric you pick. They may have to be dry cleaned if you choose that kind of fabric, but most people like washable silk covers. Fabulous if you've got pets, little kids, or you know, husbands that like to watch football and eat snacks in their comfy chairs. Um, furniture gets dirty when you use it, and being able to really get it deep down clean is appealing to a lot of people for a lot of reasons. Um, allergy issues, um, and especially if you just have sloppy people in your house. So um, we're going to take on some upholstery, uh, slipcover projects, not upholstery, and we're going to start with this um, Parsons chair that I'm sitting in. It has no arms, but it's a great starter project. It will teach you just about all of the important techniques about making a slipcover. In future segments, we're going to take on chairs with arms, and then later on chairs with wings, and bigger pieces. But right now, you're going to get 90% of the skill you need with this little chair. And you only need about four yards of fabric to make it happen. So. We're back. <laughs> so I wanted to show you a little bit of what Bernice is doing on with some of these classes. Her techniques, which um, I actually could learn from Bernice, um, her techniques are, are geared towards making a slipcover go faster for you guys. So. The value of that class, I would say, is I can't even measure the value of her classes because um, her, she's got a, to me, it's like a whole brand new technique of how to do this. And you'll see, uh, this is just some of her pinning. Um, I just wanted to show it to you. Don't ask me <laughs> how she does it, but that's why um, maybe I'll even purchase a class because I know I can learn from her. I just wanted to show you that. So thank you, Bernice King. So I'll put this back. I wanted to call Jimmy up again. Me? Yeah. Oh. So, Jimmy, uh, we were talking a little bit about your coconut fiber. And, um... Yeah, it was obviously a cheap replacement. Yeah, it was full of coconut fiber. Jimmy came in. He must have had seven bags full of coconut fiber. I didn't realize it had that much. I, I knew the seat did. I didn't realize the interior of the, the chair arms had some. They were all over it. Yes, and even especially in the back because the back had it wrapped around right. the uh, the spring set in the back. Which you know, I think I, I think I almost heard the sound, the theme for Hawaii Five O. No, the Gilligan's be. Island. <laughs> <laughs> they they were known for their coconuts too. Oh, I, mean, okay. I think they lived on coconuts. For how many years was it on TV? Eight, I don't know. <laughs> nine. But anyhow, it's to the it's gone. The coconut fiber is gone. So we have to come up with a way of um, you know stuffing this out with other materials. Now, the only thing original on this chair so far will be the frame, mm -hmm. the the coil springs that were underneath, mm -hmm. right? Which we're going to take the cushion off to show you this. So Jimmy's already uh, progressed on this. Uh, he's hand tied eight way tied the coil springs, right? My first eight way tie. I think the first time he only did a six way tie. Really? I think so. Yeah. Well, it was only a small seat. Who taught you that? <coughs> uh, uh, well, I think it was going by some strange guy named Kevin. I don't, even, I don't know what the hell his last name was. Well, so um, then after that we we uh, burlapped. Mm -hmm. And then over the burlap, we're using rubberized horsehair instead of coconut fiber. Yes. And I'll tell you about rubberized horsehair, you know, I, I'm not against all synthetics. This is, being a synthetic does a really good job 
it's very resilient. More it, it smooths, springs out, doesn't it? Oh yeah, you don't feel a thing with sitting on that at all. Jimmy learned how to do blanket stitches. So this is the thing about online classes, you're gonna learn all this. He, he had to blanket stitch the deck down and then he had to blanket stitch the entire front seat portion is also got, got some uh, rubberized horse hair and blanket stitch. Right. And he had to do edge rolling and he had to do the proper, how to properly put on the edge rolling. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's it on the seat. Now that was an education. I hadn't done any edge rolling in, in yeah. quite a while, so it was all it was all good to have it come back to me. Unfortunately, what Jimmy had in there, which we can't use, he had a beautiful coconut fiber um, stitched uh, front edge. Um, it wide. It, it was about this thick, mm -hmm. probably about three or four inches. Thick, oh yeah, it was with all these set. with all these hand stitches, but that didn't do too good either. They didn't fare well either. <laughs> yeah. So well that's okay. I mean, you know, this will uh I think enhance the mm -hmm. uh the years of this chair. I think probably the way it's set up right now, at least another twenty years. Oh more what will happen is the fabric will wear out mm -hmm. and then you can upholster over what you did three or four times. Okay. You shouldn't have to look at a the way this is going to be put together, Jimmy, you okay. shouldn't have to there'll be three or four upholsterings before you even have to do anything to the underneath part. Okay. And that's how that's how sturdy and how much I believe in it. So the other thing I wanted to mention, one of the things that came up in Jimmy's class, we were talking about what, what Jimmy's creating here on the seat is called a cake. Us upholsters call it a cake. Okay. You know, and, and uh, the Europeans are good at building their cake off the piece. I don't know if you remember me telling you this. Yes, I wish I didn't understand why they would do it that way. I think that's harder. I, it I it has to be hard. more exact. You have to be exact and you can make a mistake. And the, I think the biggest thing for me is when it's attached, they're only attaching it with the burlap and you six ounce tacks. Mm -hmm. So I think the way we do it, it's a layer by layer on the chair. We're, right. we're actually putting big tacks in the, in the edge roll and we're making sure that it's sturdy and safe with the stitching. Uh, I just like, I think our method is better, but you know, they might disagree. Well, they have to show me how they do it. I'd have to see, be, be rest assured that if I were doing it, I would want somebody watching me. Yeah. Because if, again, if it's two or three layers, you want to be sure that even though you did measure everything out, that it's going to be yeah, in the frame. It's, it's going to it be what fit. it is, what yeah, they say if, it's going to be. if you do it up and it doesn't fit. This guarantees that you're doing it layer by layer. It has to fit. Yes, I mean, absolutely. So after this, Jimmy, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to go to polyurethane. Now, you know, folks, I'm not a big one on, po on new polyurethane, but hey, sometimes you have to use polyurethane. And in this case, I think we do. Oh, the comment. We have a comment. This is from Erica. She from says, Erica. greetings from Quarantine, Seattle. Oh, boy. They got hit hard with that. I they think. did get hit hard, Jimmy, over there in Seattle. Yeah, I'm, I've heard about it, and it's, it's kind of sad. Well, it brings up a good point. If you're quarantined, why not take a class? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Make sure you get make, make sure you go to that fabric store and uh, you post you get those supplies coming in to you while you're you're still. But making. more importantly, that, that we pray uh, for everybody that's affected by cor coronavirus, and we pray that uh, they they get well soon, and and that they their immune systems are able to combat that, and that we we also pray for the vulnerable people, the the elderly and yes. the young. Yes, yes, um, gotta be very careful. And the people who don't have resources. I think one of the big problems right now is. Uh, Jimmy, is that this country doesn't really give a lot of um, health benefit, you know, sick sick pay. Mm. Sick pay is a big problem because people are making these decisions, well, if I don't go to work, I don't get paid, and then what will Yeah, exactly. So people are going to come to work sick, or they, yeah. they're going to feel a little bit under the weather, not knowing what, what yeah. they may or may not have, and, right. you know, infecting 10 to 20 people in their, yeah. in their day. So with... with this is being worked on, I think, so we hope that... Um, well, this would be a golden example of what, what they should be looking at, Yeah, for sure. But I, I hope that uh, she is in Seattle is, is uh, comfortable, and, and I'm glad she's watching. So, uh, anything else live? No. Any other things? Okay. So, Jimmy, it's getting back to your chair. Mm -hmm. If you notice, there's something else about your chair. It had a down cushion, right? Yes, that's another first for me. Jimmy, uh, you asked... Um, do you actually add down? To, very rarely do you add down. Okay. So what I'm going to ask you to do is go off into the studio, to, the vast studio to audience, mm -hmm. just for now, for a minute. I want you to take this yardstick. Okay. And that the noise that you're about to hear is just Jimmy hitting his down cushion. It's not. Uh, there's there's nothing else going on here. There's no problem, so don't worry about it. 
But Jimmy's going to go to the corner over there because it's a little dusty. And he's going to hit this with the edge of the yardstick. Now, if you have a down cushion at home, I want you guys to look at this cushion. Try to get that image. Jimmy's going to go over and he's going to hit it. and Hit it, hit it, hit it, I don't know, about 25 times. Okay. And then you're going to bring it back. Okay. And we're going to take a look at it. So it's going to make a lot of big noises. Oh, I did want to point out something. Sometimes we use yardsticks. You can see that it's lined with uh, like an ink um, here, right? Yeah. So if you have a new down cushion that you want to hit with, make sure that your yardstick isn't full of ink, right? But this is your old fabric, so you don't yeah, care. Yeah, this is, yeah. So this... take it over there. You can even, yeah, go behind Michaela, but not on that table. Just I'll over there. I'll go to the corner. I'll make it Go over to the corner, and, and the noise you're about to hear is... is it's beautiful, actually. <laughs> I hear, I hear a, a battery laughing in the back. <laughs> what are you doing over there, Jimmy? I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> well, so what he's doing is he's getting uh, air. He's getting what basically what he's doing. He's separating by hitting him like that. He's separating the feather from the down. Because you have two components to that cushion, right? The interior. So what's happening is when he's hitting it, the feathers are, are disengaging wrapped from, uh, from a lot of the down, right? So when he comes over, we're going to have a... I'm almost... not coming back. <laughs> we're we're actually going to have a brand new cushion. Hopefully he's hitting McHale's head. How'd you do, Jimmy? Well, I definitely uh, straightened it. We're straightening it out, that's for sure. Put that baby up here. Let's take a look at it. Look at that. It looks like a, it looks like a Jiffy Pop. You know the Jiffy Pop, the popcorn? I think it enjoyed look at itself. That. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's like a brand new cushion. It is. A, yeah, I'd say, you know, I was surprised when I kept beating it. Did you see what happened? Well, there was quite a bit of dust, yeah. number one, but uh -huh. also it kept expanding a little yeah. bit. You could see how it changed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when, when I was learning how to fill down cushions, we used to hand fill them in the old days. Oh, that go was... ahead, go ahead. Why don't you open up about that moment? <laughs> see? Well, you know, they always pick the, the hottest, sweatiest day for me to hand stuff. Of course they do. Just... You know, I ended up looking like a chicken myself. or doing... yeah, So people thought you were molting. Yeah. <laughs> But here it is. I, I remember doing a cushion, and I remember putting a, putting a handful, thinking I had it done. I put a handful and showed it to the upholsterer, and he said, too much, take some out. I took some out. I said, no, 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 put some back in. And it was like that. It went like that. Oh, my God, one of those. Uh... Well, I was like Cool Hand Luke. You remember that show? Yes. Anyhow, so I, I, I finally uh, got it right, and I was told and, and um, drilled into my head that the proper amount of down Mm -hmm. in a cushion comes down to a handful either more or less okay believe it or not so if you put too much in it doesn't breathe it, the, the feather and the down can't breathe if you don't put enough in there's too much there's too much uh, space so, with that said mm -hmm. if you add enough that it's firm the cushion right. is not firm for example over you, time, you, wouldn't that you, kind if of... You add, if you overstuff a down cushion, you end up with something different. It's How not so? a down cushion anymore. It's just firm. It's not, it's not doing its job. It's not breathing. Okay. So it's, there's such a thing as over, too much down. Okay. Overstuffing a down cushion. Okay, because I thought you could kind of settle it after some time and say... No, that's not how it works. No? Yeah, it's not interesting. It's not okay. A lot of people think that. The first thing they do is say, hey, can I add more down? And usually that's not the answer. Well, that's the first thing I said to you when, yeah. you, when you saw the chair. Everybody chance. says the same thing. Say, so, so let's so, go back. So, so can you go back in the corner again? Uh, no, I just want to talk a little bit more about your chair. <laughs> I know the I know the concession guy wants you back there. Ah, well, he's got two hot dogs just, ready for me. So. Oh, I know, I know, I know you love your oh, hot dogs. Hey, listen, what's all in, natural now, Jimmy. What's in a hot dog is no, it's none of our business what they put in those hot dogs. We, we don't want to think about what they put in the. No, hot we dog. want to enjoy the moment. Well, enjoy the moment of the hot dog. Don't worry about what's in it. Extra relish. <laughs> so, what we're gonna do now? I wanted to point out something about how thin the seed is. See this? Mm -hmm. So the cushion, I'm glad we, if we didn't have the cushion though, right? Let's pretend we didn't have the cushion. Okay. You as the upholster would have to try to figure out how much padding to put in the arms. We'll start with the arms first. So the arms here though, the seat width is not that wide. So that's a clue, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to overstuff these. Just enough. They're almost there for just a splash of fabric and that's it. 
okay. believe it or not. So you don't want much stuff. Now proof of that was when we put this cushion in, watch this. All right. Let's measure this distance over here. I think is, so you tell me what the distance between that and the, the welting of the cushion is. It's about an inch um, and a half? Yes, inch and a half. So, so this is not going to get any more than a one inch piece of foam and cotton. That's it. Okay. Cotton so it would just be it. enough to make it have just a shape? Just enough to, to give it some, uh, you know, you're not resting on it anyway. you got the wood up here. Okay. So you're not putting our elbows on it, but just enough shape. It's more for shape and also to match the cushion. Okay. Okay, but now, surprisingly, now you look at the back, and I don't, they can't see this, but this is about oh. four and a half inches gap yeah. back here. So the back, um, we're going to have to, you know, pad out with maybe a piece of soft foam, mm -hmm. maybe even a piece of four inch soft foam and, okay. and cotton shape over that. that. Well, actually, we can shape that by stapling it down. You'd yes, be surprised. I saw the video. There Last you go. Week. There you go. So, so I'm just trying to give you a preview now of what okay. you're going to be doing. So that gives you so a So basically the, the sides in the back fill in what the cushion does not. Well, yeah, and if you didn't have the cushion, it would be up to you to figure that out. Okay. And you can, based on, you know, um, the, the human form, really, is what you're basing it on. But if you didn't have the cushion here, um, you, you would probably instinctively know that you, you, you have to come out at least four inches from the back. Okay. So, um, I mean, unless it had a loose cushion. Now, if it had a loose cushion, mm -hmm. and you still have the option of this, by the way. You oh, still I can do. decide. Sure. We can, add on, we can add on to this or we'll make a back cushion. Um, that just, um, we could cut it out around here and make it also a down cushion. You could have a back cushion that's a down cushion on this. Just upholster this very flat and add a, add a bit, pretty much add a loose cushion. Hmm. I don't know if I, I'm a big fan of that. You'd have to think about that, right? Yeah. So, um, let's just turn it around to show people also the outside. Now, outsides are very easy uh, compared to the inside. They get very little filling. They're pretty flat. But you do want a stretcher put on it. That's another piece of fabric before you put your good fabric on, and maybe a layer of cotton in there. Mm -hmm. Very, very thin though. You don't want it. You don't want it to. The to, Yeah. Now we're gonna okay. turn it around here, and uh, same thing on the back, right? So a little bit of cotton in the back. A little of uh, a stretcher first, another piece of fabric, a little like a half layer of cotton, and then your fabric. Okay. Then you're good. So, so that's a good uh, preview of your chair upcoming. Mm -hmm. We'll put this over here, Jimmy. We'll put that back over there. Oh, I thought we'd have a documentary on this. And uh, the next chair I want to feature, Jimmy, why don't you stay here for a minute because I want to show you something over here. I want to show Jimmy something okay. there. So this is a, a, we're very proud of this chair. This is I um, love the color. Michelle is doing a great job on this. She hand tufted this chair and she did an absolute extraordinary job. She did the cushion today. Um, we had a little problem with, with the cushion today, but I think she did a fine job. We have to make an adjustment here, a little, little pucker there that we're going to take care of and we're going to stuff this cushion out a little bit more. And she's ready for her double piping. Now she did all this herself. A lot of work. What, Jimmy, I want to show you that what's unusual about this chair. This is a manufacturer's chair. Mm -hmm. And they had, they did have it tufted before, but the buttons they use had those long clips on them. Ah, like okay. the metal clips, you put the button in and then you separate the clip. I don't even use those. But we had to figure out a way. The outside back on this one is really done really well. She's going to... She's going to put double piping all along here, but we needed a space in order to work our twines. In our traditional way that we tie uh, tufting, we, we, we put the slip knot on and we put a little ball of cotton and then we tighten it. If you go to Broadway Upholstery School, you can see me doing that. I believe we have, yeah, we do. We have a tufting video on that. And I think it's the sofa, Patrick, the DIY sofa that we have yeah. up there. So the she did the buttons whole herself. Whole yeah, whole She series. did the buttons. She didn't buy them. We, we, yeah, <laughs> we handmade the buttons. Each button has to be handmade and made sure that it, it's, it's properly done mm -hmm. so that the top doesn't pop off. Because right. the last thing you want is the top popping off after you've done such a beautiful job. Yes, Very I tricky know. to she, fix something like she, that. I love this, though. I love she this style. I love the color. She did a good job. So let's put this aside. You guys, online, that's that's what you're going to get online, all that. And all of Jimmy's, I think we've got, how much, Patrick, how many different lessons do we have? Each individual lesson. I, 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 it's going to be 11 lessons total. Yeah, but I mean, total right now on the on the site, 
Uh, if I had to guess, I would say 50 different lessons. Wow. At least, Patrick. I mean, we got, what, four classes? So. Yeah, but I mean, each one is about 10. Yeah. So I think, and, and then with Bernice, it's just going to explode pretty soon with Bernice up there, too. So you're going to yeah, get... Yeah, I mean, the other future projects down the road. Yeah, and we've got all this other stuff that's coming up. By the time you're done, I think by the time the summer comes along, we might, we might even have 100 different... Uh, lessons and each lesson's about an hour and a half long and within each lesson Jimmy you can speak on this mm -hmm. how many how many times do you ask a question or how many tips do you think that are um, at least at least well, well with my this particular chair I'm always asking every week right. it seems like we're I'm asking two to three different questions all the time mm -hmm. even before well before the class even starts what are right. we gonna do how's this gonna work what are we gonna do with this right because I all I, valid questions yes you know all valid questions and and you know what you get the answer and I think that's what we're hearing back from like people like Janine who are telling us that this way of teaching, this method of teaching, mm -hmm. I can never do it on YouTube. It's just too much of a, it's, it's just too long and drawn out for YouTube oh, anyhow. Oh, yeah, yeah, you gotta, you gotta keep things fresh and you gotta keep right. things moving. And right. You, you know, some, some of the things, uh, yeah, stripping that chair down does take some time and nobody right. wants to watch that, but I think there is a small basic class or small basic lessons to these at least getting the chairs down to where you want it to be to right. start over but again. But the step-by-step -step process. Yeah, at that, least, yes. So if you were at home trying to do a chair like that, um, I'm afraid, would you be stuck a lot on what to do? Um, how to do it? I think, yeah, well, of course, they always say right now, take pictures of what you have. Uh, take pictures of uh, as you strip it down because you want to see what you need to do to kind of build it back up again and what changes you want to make. Right. You know, and somebody right. being very inexperienced, the... The chair being so old with the springs and the backing with the springs that I think we, we showed um, is something that, again, you know, people got to know which way to go with and what, what their alternative method of building the chair back up again and making it look 100%. Right, right. It's good to have somebody tell you, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice to have somebody in your corner. I want to uh, show on this, Jimmy. Uh, this is one of the hardest cuts in upholstery to uh, cut around a Martha Washington arm. Um, this one's not as hard as some, but I just want to open up this this corner here to show you. Um, I want to try to cut. I want to try to cut around here to show the cut mm -hmm. how they did it. Okay, then I might even have had time. I have a piece of fabric over there that I might try to cut around here. Take this off. There's a piece of ply grip that they had, they had it closed. Wow, this is on, this is on here. Good, Jimmy. They had a good pneumatic staple gun. Whoever did it. Well, it was probably all factory done. It was a factory done. No, this is a custom upholsterer. Okay. I can tell already. And um, I don't think a manufacturer would make an arm like this because it's too hard. Okay. So they they avoid stuff like this. So you only see this in old furniture. That's one thing I've never worked with is the metal strip. So I'm going to try to, yeah, we'll, we'll do that at some point. I'm going to try to cut around this. It is a very neat, very neat uh, cut they did. It's a series of cuts. that a unique cut yes it is it, it is and I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna show it to you now with a with a piece of muslin see if we can do it to show you how this is how this is done but that's what it looks like right and you can't really I caution people against uh, making their own patterns from this you, you know if you carefully took this off laid this on a piece of fabric and cut all this out I guarantee it wouldn't fit mm -hmm. you actually have to cut it when the fabrics in place pretty much in place on the chair Okay. So that's what makes it hard though to read. So let's see if we can duplicate that, Jimmy. I mean, it is very well put together. There's definitely not any errors with the, uh, the way he did it. No, they did. This is a fine upholstery job. Whoever did it did a great job. 
So I'm going to just pretend like this is a whole piece, right? Yeah. So the key to this cut is that you have to have it tacked to the back mm -hmm. and then tacked underneath here. Mm -hmm. okay, I think I might even get a tack in there just to demonstrate. Because, because the hard part about it is that you have to have it tight. It has to be tight and then you cut it. Now the problem with having a tight cover is that it, it folds your fabric in an unnatural way. It's not loose anymore, see? So let's that just, you're looking at the way, the way it's So we have that. Let's say it's all covered, and mm -hmm. we have that back there, and we, and we have that right here. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to you, Jim, and I just have to come this side. So I, I fold the fabric back, okay? Mm -hmm. And I put it up against this portion of the arm, mm -hmm. but like this. And I'm making sure I get it nice and folded and nice and tight, right? By the way, before I do this, is there any other questions or comments? So, um, believe it or not, I, I have to come around here with a piece of fabric, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, the first cut is, is a cut, and I have to get this to snake around this way. So, you don't want to cut like this because you won't have enough hair. So, you're, you're angling like this. And now, here's the thing that baffles a lot of people, right? You have to be pretty close this way to about a half of an inch of the, uh, of the arm. And then I'm going to just come over here. Then you've got to cut this way. You've got to cut this way. Um, it represents almost to the back of the arm, but not quite. And then you make a little cut this way, right? And then a little cut up this way, just to ease it up a little bit around the end. Let's just see now. So we may have to cut this a little deeper. But you're in the ballpark. Yep. Oh my god, wow. That is good. So I just want to show the front. Let me just get over there a little bit more, Jimmy, and just show. Okay. This needs to be cut just a little bit deeper here. This is also a very precise cut. And you know, you need your regulator to work it, but like this. That gets another cut. And remember, this is a very thin fabric that I'm using, and then I can even trim that this way. Okay, and then that gets another pleat this way. So I did the front. See that? Nice. Isn't that nice? Now you, when you cut here, you mm -hmm. cut, I thought you would cut this way twice. Yeah, that's that's a common mistake. Really? Yeah. Now if you would cut it, both cuts this way, you what wouldn't, would have You happened? wouldn't have enough fabric to swing around the back. Let, ah, me, just, let okay. me just take this off to show people. So it looks very close to the one that I took off, doesn't it? Yeah. See the series of cuts right there? Okay. It's just practice. So if people had a bath and wash in chair, you should just practice this. You know, before you actually, if you're going to be doing one, before you actually get to the goods. You know, okay. you should be practicing. So that was what I wanted to show. I also wanted to maybe, Jimmy, uh, before we close out, maybe take the outside, see how they, they upholstered the outside back. I have a feeling they use ply grip, but I want to show people sometimes how difficult it is taking ply grip off. Mmm, yes, so, it is. I've had a couple of chairs like yeah, that. Yeah, they're tough. Uh, well, so, there has to be a good technique with it. There is a well, technique. you know, there, there could be. Um, so sometimes, one thing is, right, well, let's just take it off. Any questions? No? Let's just start by undoing the fabric. Okay, because ah, the fabric go. should just pull right up. Now I would caution people to be very careful because this stuff once it once it unfolds, mm -hmm. it's very sharp. Yes. I mean it's great for the fabric. It, it closes up on the fabric nicely, but when you've got it at this position now, it's sharp. So be careful. So I guess I guess what I would say is try to take the fabric out first. Right? Sometimes it doesn't cooperate. Now they did ply grip the whole thing. <laughs> Okay, so let's start up. I want to show people something. So what I usually do is let's start on the right first, right? Let's do that. And then, yeah, it doesn't pull, right? It doesn't pull great that way, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on this side. Sometimes, believe it or not, if the, if the, if the gun's been angled mm -hmm. a little bit and they're putting their stables in, mm -hmm. and one side's up, mm -hmm. that side's the one that pulls easier. 
Does ah, that make sense? Okay, yes, okay. So it depends on how the upholster was upholstered. So let's just see if that's the case. Let's just see if we can pull this off. Well, guess what? We're not going to be pulling anything off this. This is going to be a tedious process. I mean, ideally you want you want something to pull off, but you feel how sharp that is, Jimmy? Yeah. People should be careful if they're doing this. So, yeah, they, so that, that leads you to, you know, I'm always trying to speed up my process without getting hurt, right? So um, I'm going to come up top here and I'm going to try to get leverage and at one staple at a time pretty much. Um, sometimes what I do, because I have my ply cutters, my uh, ply cutters are actually cutting the ply grip. Sometimes I'll take a pair of pliers and see if a pair of regular pliers will do. Nope, see it's, it's ripping. So, so you're stuck with doing one at a time, which is going to well, be, which is going to be a long process, but that's okay. I, I remember when it. I did this once with a, another chair, and it was a heavy chair because they had used all the tacks and so on, and really made it. When I redid it, it was lighter, but the yeah. point being is when I took this off, I twisted it off. That's another method. Yeah. You know, but you, you can only go so far with that before yeah. you, again, you have to be very careful with yeah. the way this is because you will cut yourself and yeah. it's not a good thing to be doing that. Right, way. right. You have to be careful. Of course, then you have to go back and make sure that you get all the staples that are, are right. still sticking up and you have to feel for that if you can. Don't trust your eyes. Just no. gently rub your finger along and then get the loose staples. And then you have the piping to take off. Yes. And, and then, then the when you get to the itself. fabric, though, you have to kind of slow down a little bit because you don't want you don't want to be pulling that off and damaging the, the the goods on the inside. This is one thing we don't really need. This we'll replace this. Okay. But as far as the inside back and the inside seat, because this is in such good shape and it's only a reupholstery, meaning mm -hmm. we're taking the fabric off and reupholstering pretty much. Mm -hmm. And so we want to be careful once we get to those portions of okay. the chair. So. so when you put this back on, what are you going to? What's the method going to be? Uh, stitching, or are you going to put uh, this no, back? I think I'll probably use the same method they did. Only one difference. I was surprised to see that they didn't use tacking tape on one side. Okay. So I can, it depends on fabric too, because um, if it's a plain fabric, and I'm not sure what the fabric is on this, you could blind tack with the tack tape one side, and then just have the, the ply grip for the top and the bottom and, and one side. Okay. And they ply grip the whole thing because they probably felt. Let's just pull this up for a second. They probably felt that they had to maintain a nice center on this fabric. So mm -hmm. if you're maintaining a center, it's a good idea to ply grip all three sides. Does that make sense? Yeah. Not enough sturdy, balanced. So, Jimmy, you think we've come to the close of our question? Another and another fine show. Is this the Academy Award? Uh, I think you're going to be discovered like some of those old time movie actresses well, and actors. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you insist. <laughs> Yes, I'm still waiting my, for my Screen Actors Guild card. I think I mean, it's coming. Listen. Uh, kind of, yeah, they've got to put a stamp on it this time. It, <laughs> it, it may get here a little bit quicker with that. <laughs> well, Jimmy, thank you for joining us. Uh, not a problem, Kevin. Anytime. And thank you, and we'll see you next time.